The Eternals have made a bit of a splash in Marvel recently. Obviously, there was the Eternals movie, which was underrated in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts down below. And then obviously, we have the current event going on right now, Judgment. It's the perfect time to talk about the top 10 Eternals members stronger than you think. I'm Adam Andrews with Top 10 Nerd, and uh, let's get into it. Number 10, The Hex. Okay, so this is kind of cheating, as the Hex are actually a group of six Eternals, and also, while the other Eternals resemble humans, for the most part, the Hex are more like gargantuan war machines. The six of these female Eternals, Femex, Tetitrona 3000, Rika Centaurus, Fieka the Harpiscus, Phoebe Reginax, and Sign the Memotar, I'm sorry if I mispronounced any of those, are all powered by cosmic energy, just like the rest of the Eternals, and also like the other Eternals, they each have more specific skills. The Mex is described as an orbital annihilator. Tetitrona can deploy destruction nodes. Rika is like a kind of druid being able to manipulate plant life, making plant creatures to attack other people, which is kind of cool. Fieka is incredibly good at becoming intangible. Phoebe is a magic user. And last but not least, Sign can manipulate fire for both destruction, but also creation. Don't ask me how. Number nine, the Delphin Brothers. The Delphin Brothers are, again, another interesting Eternal, or Eternals. It's a little confusing because while they started out as just one Eternal, their mother, the Delphin Mother, duplicated the Eternal into four clones, which was something other Eternals were not too happy about. In some stories, there have been at least eight of these guys, but that was retconned in a recent run, so it is just four. The best part is that they are usually shown to be a little childish, and they're always just kind of there, used as like muscle or to do bidding for another whoever is in charge. The four of these Eternals have all basic Eternal abilities with no speciality other than being copies of each other. They don't get individual names and they almost always wear the same clothes, so they are completely interchangeable with one another. Number eight, Psychos. In 2000, Marvel released New Eternals Apocalypse Now, which I think was supposed to revamp the Eternals as it put together a new group of Eternals with some of favorites and made them a new team of superheroes called the New Breed. One of these Eternals was called Psychos, or as his superhero alter ego, Psyche. As you can tell, Marvel was being extremely creative with this new team of Eternals, so surprisingly, Psyche had an affinity for psionic abilities. He has shown the power to probe minds, manipulate the bodies of people against their will, and alter people's perceptions, as well as having the regular Eternal powers. He was also the most edgy member of the team, as he was arrogant, short-tempered, and was considered reckless. I'm sure he would have probably become a villain if this team gained any popularity. Number seven, Chi Demon. Just like Psychos, Suyin King, or Chi Demon, was also a member of the new breed, although, in my opinion, she was just a bit more cooler. The reason I think that probably has a lot to do with the fact that she could summon an energy-charged flaming sword using her molecular abilities. The only thing is that she was part of the new breed, and she was marginally less cool because she was part of that team. This means we don't get to see her do much, but she did get to beat up some bigots who attacked her in a parking lot for having progressive ideologies, so she gets a boost in coolness factor for that. Number six, Pixie. Pixie was actually part of an Earth superhero team from the 20th century known as the First Line, a team who all completely perished except for Pixie when they defended Earth from a Skrull attack. Now, the fact that the team was decimated is pretty bad, but Pixie survived, which I feel kind of gives her at least a bit of a one-up on others. As for her powers, well, she has all the Eternal Starter Pack abilities, although when it comes to energy projections, she kind of sucks. But what's interesting about Pixie is that she carries a substance she calls her Pixie Dust. This dust can turn creatures into stone for about an hour. Now, all Eternals have the power to transmute matter to a greater or lesser extent, depending on how much they have developed it. So it's possible that Pixie uses the Pixie Dust as a focus for this side of her powers. Number five, Interloper. Betalak the Interloper is rather unique among the Eternals. While he is one of Earth's Eternals, he chooses to stay mostly separate from them. He doesn't even really deal with them at all except for the Eternal Gilgamesh, who also has a bit more of a solo thing going on, but we're going to talk about him in a sec. Other than the usual Eternal abilities, Interloper has a particular affinity for inducing fear in others. He can even do this to the degree that they will be too afraid to even face him, which is actually, that's pretty intense. What's even more interesting about Interloper is that he seems to have a vendetta against the Dragon of the Moon. He 
has faced this entity multiple times over his long life, even fighting it alongside King Arthur back in the day and alongside the Defenders in more recent times. Number 4. Gilgamesh Gilgamesh, or in his other names, the Forgotten One, Hero, or the Lost Eternal, is known to be one of the physically strongest of the Eternals. He is also a big fan of us, humans, and spent a lot of time traveling through the world, slaying monsters, hanging out with other heroes, and taking part in pretty big things. He's actually well known for being pals with Hercules as he helped him to clean the Aegean stables. He took on the burden of Atlas like Hercules did, and he and Hercules fought together on the walls at Urtatha and bested the demon dragon Zoo. Gilgamesh helped lay the foundations for Rome and even fought as a centurion for the Roman Empire. He befriended King David and helped translate the Rosetta Stone. It's for all his interference with humans that he was actually consigned to a forgotten part of Olympia by Zuras for a time. He's definitely one of the coolest Eternals out there, even if he is kind of forgotten sometimes. Number 3, Ultimus. Okay, so just like the Earth has Eternals, so do a lot of other planets. One of those planets would be Hala, the homeworld of the Kree, resulting in the Kree Eternals and the Kree Deviants. One of the most well known of the Kree Eternals would be Ard Khan, or Ultimus. He, along with the rest of the Kree Eternals, took to space and went exploring, which brought them to Earth. But unlike the rest of his race, Ard Khan stayed here for about a millennia before being imprisoned by a deviant. When this guy first showed up in Thor issue 209, he was able to incapacitate Thor for about two hours with a single punch. So right off the bat, he's really strong. And going toe to toe with Thor shows us he has pretty much all the abilities Eternals have, like energy manipulation and being immune to any kind of aging, but Ultimus could also manipulate radioactive energy as well as using it to heal and strengthen himself as well as alter his size. He was also immune to the telepathic attacks of Star Fox, so he has that. Number 2, Falcon. When Zeras became the Eternal Leader, he ordered the construction of Olympia, the Eternal's capital city, but there were also two other cities built as well, Oceania in the Pacific and Polaria in Siberia. Valken was a polar Eternal, and these Eternals were a bit more of a brutish group than it compared to the Olympia Eternals who were all fancy schmancy. But this group of Eternals also spawned some of the strongest ones, including Icarus, Ajax, and Druig, who was the son of Valken. Valken's power should be evident from that fact alone, but his his presence scared a group of scuffling Eternals, including Icarus and the Delphin Brothers. He could fire energy from his eyes like Icarus, but also lightning bolt energy blasts from his hands. He could fly at the speed of sound, and he even had the telepathic ability to delete memories, even from Asgardians. But Valken's real strength probably lays in his mind. He was an incredibly gifted military strategist, as well as a really good architect. He was always said to be exceedingly intelligent, but he apparently lacked creativity which probably led to his demise when Thanos became the Prime Eternal. Number 1. Thane Speaking of Thanos, Thane is another particularly unique Eternal. Thane is the son of the hybrid mutant Eternal, Thanos, and an inhuman woman. So Thane is both an Eternal with that deviant gene, plus he was an inhuman, which is important as Thane underwent the process of terogenesis, and let me tell you, buddy boy here is pretty scary. After Black Bolt of the Inhumans detonated the Terrigen during a fight with Thanos, who was looking for his lost son, the Terrigen Mists activated Thane's powers, which then accidentally decimated the inhabitants of the lost city of Orolon. Thane gained the ability of Death Touch with his left hand. This essentially meant that anyone within a certain radius of Thane just straight up meets their end. But it was an incredibly unstable ability to have, so he had to have a containment suit given to him by Ebony Ma. Now with his right hand, Thane can project an amber construct and anyone he traps within it is left in a state of living death. So it's either the end or like basically the end. Thane has used this ability when powered by the Black Vortex to contain the whole of the planet Spartax. Oh, he's also had the Phoenix Force at one point. It kind of feels like Marvel didn't really know what to do with this character, so they just kind of like threw different things at him. And uh, there you go. 10 Eternals you may not have known who are stronger than you think. I've been Adam Andrews with Top 10 Nerd. I'll see you all next time. Peace out, nerds.